Now that we've finished specifying the Sour Water Stripper in the previous tutorial, let's take a look at the questions at the bottom of the page. First, we're asked to determine the pump's head and required horsepower. Both of these are properties associated with the pump, so we'll double click on the pump and go to the Process Data tab. Here I can see that the dynamic head is 92.47 feet and the brake power is 19.46 horsepower. Question number two asks about the duty, endpoint approach temperature, and effective UA in the feed effluent exchanger. After opening the exchanger, I'll again go to the Process Data tab and then select the heat transfer choice from the grouping sidebar. The duty is shown as 2.6 E to the 7 BTUs per hour. I can hover over this value to see this in several other units, such as 7,640 kilowatts, or I can click over here to change the units displayed in the box. If I select million BTUs per hour, I see that it updates the value to show 26 million BTUs per hour. The end approach temperature is given here as 47.1 degrees Fahrenheit. Last, the effective UA is shown as 546,482. The stripper bottoms temperature can be easily seen by hovering over the bottom stream and is shown as 237 degrees Fahrenheit. Recovery of H2S and NH3 in the overhead is one of the calculated values given in the column. If we open the column, then go to the Stage Data tab, then Recoveries, we can see that the ammonia recovery is 99.1% and the hydrogen sulfide recovery is 99.99% in the overheads. Question 5 asks about the pH of the sour water and the stripped water streams. There are two ways to find this information. First, if we go to the sour water stream, then select Composition, you can see that there is an ionic info button available here. You can look for the H plus ion and the P molarity column and see that the pH is 7.45. The second method is to add a new analysis, called the Ionic Info Analysis. Once the Solve button is clicked, the pH is given both in molarity and activity. We can then look at the stripped water pH and see that it is 8.9. The next question asks what size of pipe is required for the stripper overheads to keep an acceptable pressure drop across a length of piping. We'll add a new line sizing analysis to the stripper overhead stream. We're told to limit the pressure drop to less than 5 psi per 100 feet, and we're told it's made of Schedule 40 pipe. Tell it to solve, and we can see that the pipe size is given as a 4 inch pipe. This also results in a velocity of 257 feet per second, and a warning that this exceeds the erosional velocity of about 32 feet per second. Typing this in as an additional constraint and resolving the analysis then updates the required pipe size to a 12 inch pipe. The message below indicates that the limiting factor is not the pressure drop, but the velocity constraint. The last question asks about the critical point for the same stream. We'll add a new analysis here and select the phase envelope choice. Tell it to solve and we can see the critical information displayed here. The critical pressure is 1464 PSIA and the critical temperature is 242 degrees Fahrenheit. We can also see this information on the plot by switching to the plots view. Look forward to the next tutorial that will cover the simple MDEA sweetening unit exercise that is next in the Promax Foundations manual.